Hey what's up guys, welcome to a brand new video here on my channel. Today we're gonna talk about the top 5 tips and tricks in Guns of Boom to become a pro player. Now you guys were asking me quite a lot of times, how do you get unstoppables, how do you get those amazing clips and whatsoever and I thought since the Guns of Boom ESL is standing around the corner, it's gonna be tomorrow, I thought well now it's the time to talk about it. So. First of all, I gotta mention a few things before we hop into it. Now those clips you will see in the background, which I used to exemplify basically the top 5 points, are being played in pro play mode. So we are having right now the uh, Gods of Boom event challenge, whatever it's called, running in Guns of Boom and this means we all play with similar loadout strength wise and on top of that we're playing without aim assist, which makes it a little bit harder but also more fair on the on the battlefield. Second of all, I want to mention that these points are not giving you a predefined strategy for your gameplay. Basically, you need to take those points, see how your playstyle is and then make them customized to it. Last but not least, I want to also mention that tomorrow there will be the live stream on my channel which is also going to be about the ESL Gods of Boom event and I'm going to be moderating there in German. So uh, I will need to apologize there as well to everybody who subscribed to my channel to watch videos in English. This is a one-time exception, I just want to support uh, this event to help this game grow and also I thought, well, it's a one-time opportunity. That's why I'm actually doing it and I hope you can forgive me, I promise you there will be amazing videos coming up in the future which will be also in English so this is a one-time exception. So now that I have said that let's hop into point one which is weapons and this is I think the most controversial point in Guns of Boom cause people are always saying or tend to say that um, yeah you have a better weapon that's why you're better than me and I think this is kind of to an extent true however um, there is more to it as you will see when we go through all the other points as weapons alone, alright, you can, you definitely gain a big advantage thanks to that. However, they're not the only thing which come into play when you're playing Guns of Boom. So, first of all, what I gotta say about uh, weapons is, of course, there is a discrimination between strength between them and a discrimination between uh, free to play and pay to play, or at least if you invest the premium currency here in Guns of Boom, of course, you're getting a lot stronger. However, weapons entail a lot more to it. So. I said it also in my past videos quite a lot of times when I was for example talking about the life stealer where a lot of people are saying it's trash that if you use it properly then it actually can be quite powerful. Also with the juggernaut where people are saying it's not that good as the Odin. Before you evaluate a weapon in its core then you need to first of all figure out its advantages and its disadvantages. How can you use it properly in order to get the maximum of advantages out of it and eliminate the disadvantages during a match? And this is something which I believe is pretty crucial and which I am talking about for a lot of time. One example is the Orion for example. People usually say that it's a trash weapon. But is it a trash weapon because it just doesn't fit their playing style or they cannot play with it? Or is it a trash weapon because it's really a trash weapon? And this is why I think figuring out the advantages and disadvantages is really important so that you can really make use of the weapon. So for the Orion for example you gotta stay in the medium distance always otherwise you're screwed. If an opponent walks towards you, you need to walk backwards. If he's running away from you, you just stand still. So it's kind of a mirrored uh, shotgun, kind of the complete opposite to what we're used to. However, that doesn't mean that the weapon is trash and that also means that you can use the weapon in an effective way to get incredible kill streaks. I'm just using this example for the Orion since people were discussing it for a lot of time lately and I think um, this counts also for a lot of other weapons. So if you use it properly, then it can be quite powerful. And this comes into play as well when we talk about point number two, which is the loadout. So in the loadout, what I'm, what I want to emphasize there on is that you can actually mix weapons in a way that they complement each other. So this means, for example, let's take an example from the past where I was having the life stealer as my uh, assault rifle and the Thanatos as my sniper. And I used the Thanatos to eliminate health, a lot of health of my opponent and then switch quickly to the life stealer and then uh, basically finish the opponent off and still got a lot of health back. So even though the life stealer is weak in strength, I could kind of combine the Thanatos and the life stealer in a way that the life stealer actually became quite powerful because I always regained a lot of health thanks to that and could get amazing kill streaks. 
And this is kind of possible with almost every weapon, I'd say. I'm talking now about, of course, the top tier weapons. Uh, that when you combine them properly, you can get a big advantage thanks to them. And on top of that, that counts as well for armory and uh, your pants you're wearing, your helmet. So for me personally, it's the jockey I'm wearing. People are always saying, yeah, you gotta wear another uh, pa type of pants because they are making you faster, because they are uh, increasing your re reload speed. Well, the jockey is increasing your armory when uh, you kill an opponent. So that means you have actually a lot more health to finish off the next opponent and you increase your chances for getting imp incredible kill streaks. Now, I don't want to say that the other pants are bad. Of course, you can combine all of that in a different way that you can also get amazing kills and all of that kind of stuff. I'm just saying it from my perspective. And that comes as well for uh, consumables. You can also kind of combine them in a way that it really fits your loadout and rounds it off in a very nice way. And in the end of the day, uh, you need to find your loadout for yourself. Uh, you know my loadouts from the videos which I'm using. However, you're having maybe a different playstyle, you're a rusher or whatsoever. And you can actually kind of combine and play around with those, um, with the pants and the helmet and whatsoever to really make it a strong loadout and stand above everyone else. So, uh, Part number three is all about precision and what I felt like also during a pro play is that people don't really manage to get headshots and this is also in normal gameplays quite often the case and you gotta think about it in that way. If you're managing to get your opponent's headshots that in the end means you're taking less damage. In the end you're having more health, you can do more damage to another opponent, you have higher chances of really doing a lot of damage to the opponent's team. So. Giving headshots is crucial and is really important for getting high kill streaks. It up your precision and uh, then it's all good. So this is a very simple point, but I just want to emphasize on it because that's what I'm always trying to do and what I'm aiming for. Headshots are key as well and you can also beat with a lower tier weapon, also a higher tier weapon for example, if the opponent is just shooting at your body and you're giving headshots. So it's really, 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 really important to always keep that in mind. Now point number four is something uh, I haven't talked about yet really in depth and I think is also missing quite a lot in uh, tutorial videos when they're talking about how you get can get a pro and this is awareness on the battlefield. Now what I'm, how I'm seeing the battlefield or the screen, it's basically filled with information. You have sounds, you have visuals, which give you a clue of what your opponents are doing, of what your teammates are doing. And this is really important so that you can predict where opponents are coming from, you know their position, you know how to approach them. For example, when there is a sniper and you come with a shotgun, you're in close range, you won this battle. And this is also a thing which comes down to awareness. So for example, when I'm, I'm analyzing kind of a battlefield, I do it subconsciously, so that's why I'm never talking about it, cause I got used to it. However, for example, you see sometimes bullet shots fired, you hear them as well. So you know, alright, there around the corner is an opponent. Or as well you see, my teammate is da taking damage, so in that area is an opponent. And based on the sound of the weapon, you can also kind of distinguish which weapons the person is using and therefore uh, kind of prepare yourself for the battle. So this also counts when you have play for example control point, which I think is one of the best uh, ways to really experience or, or train your awareness. So you have three control points there, A, B and C. If you're having two control points or, or let's say you know uh, opponent, uh, your opponent's team is taking control point A. You see that the bar is filling up and on maps usually the people are then going to the next control point. So you kind of can predict which way they're going and you can prepare yourself. So if there is for example a possibility to take them out the sniper and you can catch them off guard there while they're running to be that's awesome you take them out easy peasy kill. And there are a lot of more things, so for example footsteps, you can as well simply look at the screen who killed whom, so you know, alright, uh, my teammate died there or, or my teammate survived in this situation, so I don't need to rush there and support him, I can go a different route, there might be probably an opponent. So this, these are all kinds of things which help me to predict where opponents are and sometimes in videos you will also see that I actually don't know who's standing around the corner, but based on the shots fired or, or on the weapon which I'm hearing, I know alright this guy is now there with the shotgun, so I try to wait until this guy comes around the corner or try to find a different angle cause I don't want to get into a close fight with the shotgun that's taking a lot of health 
from me or if that's a sniper I just rush into it with a shotgun or an assault rifle could be also the case and that means I easily win this battle. So enough about uh, awareness, um, there's also a thing which comes with awareness, so for example you're trying to hold an area for a long time, uh, not camping but kind of you, you overview the battlefield, you try to control it, at some point people know how you behave, how your strategy looks like, I think it's a natural process that people kind of learn while battling, so you need to be unpredictable and in a lot of clips where you see me playing uh, or doing an unstoppable, it is like that I'm standing at a certain area, I control this one where I'm uh, positioning myself in an advantage, but at some point people know that I'm there and that's a problem, right? So they know now where I am, which weapons I'm using, so they can prepare now themselves to take me out easier. So. I need to be unpredictable so that when people arrive then at this point when they notice alright he's always there in this area, I need to switch location. And when I do that I try to position myself in a way that I'm again at an advantage when they're coming in and I try to predict as well their weapons when they move to this. And this is uh, basically all, this all comes down to unpredictability and is also one, my, uh, one of my top 5 tips in Guns of Boom to become a pro. Now after we went now through all the points I'm sure that people are like alright way too scientific I don't care about all of those points but trust me I didn't approach it that way either it's just like I had my drive I always wanted to get unstoppables to entertain you guys and to show basically how, how amazing my skills are in that way however um, it all comes with practice and it not, it's not coming overnight but as long as you're aware of those points, you know, alright, these are the points he's using to get better. Uh, yeah, as long as you practice it, you always think about after a scene, why did I die there? Ah, it was point four, for example. Uh, that Then you can actually improve and it happens all subconsciously. As long as you focus then during the match, it's just automatic, cause uh, yeah, no battle is the same, so you always need to adjust, you cannot go in with a strict strategy and play always the same way, you need to be like liquid, like flowing with the flow and try to make the best of it and basically this is my trick and I hope basically this summarizes everything uh, I want to mention in this today's video, I hope you enjoyed it as well, if you did drop a like, if you didn't drop a dislike, make sure to subscribe as well if you haven't done so far, we are gonna see each other either in the live stream tomorrow if you're German speaking or first you're also invited if you're English speaking, however I'm not sure if you're gonna understand much. Um, but other than that we're gonna see each other in the next video or the next live stream whenever you tune in and that's gonna do it for today guys, peace out.